The sweet noise of homecoming is great, especially with the South Florida Bulls riding the longest winning streak in school history. But it was time for quarterback Quentin Flowers to tune out all outside distractions. The focus for him and the rest of his teammates now fell solely on figuring out a way to beat the Cincinnati Bearcats to keep that streak going. Bulls head coach Charlie Strong in his first year on the job has put together a defense that ranks 15th in the country to go along with a USF record setting offense. The combination along with truly special special teams would make for a long night for Cincinnati and for a great homecoming. Connected on nine straight this one from 39 on the right hash on the way and good. Kicker Emilio Nadelman's big night was just getting started, and so was the Bulls' defense. Larcenous as well as stingy. Cincinnati pinned back again. Well, two guys on the edge have been making plays all year for USF. One is 41, Greg Reeves. The other is number 98, Mike Love. And who are the first two guys in the backfield? The two defensive ends. Mike Love is having a great year. Cincinnati managed the tying field goal, but little did anyone know at that time they would not score again. But you knew the Bulls would. They came into the game averaging just under 45 points a game, the fifth highest scoring team in the nation. Flowers, far side. Pass finally gets there, that'll move the chains. Ahead to the 49-yard line. Tight ends got it, Mitchell Wilcox tripped up at the 20. Emilio Nadelman, who's perfect tonight, has made 10 in a row, make it 11. It was a bit of a slow start for the offense based on their own lofty standards, but the Bulls' defense was more than able to hold the fort until things started to gel. Moore with a pocket, flings it deep. Boone is open, but it's out of bounds. Hoggins in coverage, he's been active. Not just in coverage, but his special teams play helped protect the narrow lead as well. And his kick is up, it has the distance. And it is no good. Wide to the left, Ronnie Hoggins got in. This is what makes South Florida so hard to beat. While the end zone remained elusive for the Bulls, they have balance and can be great at all phases of the game. The defense was well entrenched, and special teams had a guy who was about to be named second team midseason All-American by the Associated Press. 21-yard effort. We'll split the pipes. Emilio Nadelman continues to make his marks in the USF record book and had the Bulls up 9-3. Third and 14, they snap it, Moore wasn't looking, and he's going to be sacked way back at the 24. It was the break the Bulls had been working and waiting for. They got good field position on the subsequent punt, and it took just five plays to move the ball 60 yards. A Quentin Flowers to Temi Uglaka hookup covered more than half of that. And Darius Tice from the 11 scored the game's first touchdown. Suddenly it was 16 to 3. The explosiveness of the Bulls was never more evident than in the final two and a half minutes of the half. After the Tice touchdown, they struck again, this time on defense with Augie Sanchez intercepting Hayden Moore and returning it 65 yards as time expired for a 23-3 halftime lead. Turnovers have been a huge part of South Florida's success. They now lead the country in interceptions. The homecoming party was officially in full swing at halftime, even if the Bearcats weren't in a particularly celebratory mood. There may have been a little relief at halftime, but no let up in the second half. The Bulls continue to pride themselves on the way they play as well as the results. And a win would give Charlie Strong's group the longest active winning streak in the country. 
but making plays now. Boom. Spin move and spun down. Bruce Hector and that USF front four. The large homecoming crowd was getting an eyeful of a team that is one of only eight left unbeaten in all of FBS football. Quinton Flowers remained the general in charge of one of the most exciting offenses in the college game today. It's been all Bulls, the dump off, Dylan. The balanced Bulls offensive attack would have nearly an equal amount of yards rushing as they did passing, mixing and matching ball carriers and receivers on their way to their 23rd straight game, scoring 30 or more points. Flowers, left side. And he got there for the touchdown. He only needed a couple of inches, and that's exactly what he got, Tom. That was close. Flowers became just the second USF player to gain 3,000 career rushing yards. The other is now playing in the NFL for the Indianapolis Colts, Marlon Mack. For the most part, the outcome had been decided, but the Bulls pressed on, forcing at least two takeaways for the sixth straight game. Moore lost the football, and USF recovers. Jawan Brown with the strip sack and recovery and the turnover gave Nadelman a chance for a fourth field goal. He's missed only one all year, and that one was blocked. A lot of things are going well for the Bulls right now, but there is a lot of football to be played yet before they reach their ultimate goal. But it was a great homecoming with smiles all around the bay as the alumni departed into the night. The 33-3 win would move the Bulls up to 13th and 16th in the two major polls, their highest ranking in nine years. Their 6-0 record would match the best start in program history. Yes, the Bulls continue to trend upward, and if they keep working hard, it doesn't have to stop.